you know what it is. All right, how are you doing, by the way? Yeah. What exactly did you guys bring me into here? You're talking about punching people in the face, guys running around with no shirts on. It's a lot for me in the morning. It's only 8.30 out here on the West right. Coast. Oh, gosh. Yes. You should see what yes. we talk about in commercial breaks. What's up? We'll go. Uh, Joe, let's start with tonight's game with the over-under currently set at 42. Which way are you leaning here? I play under 42. The easy analysis here is to say that these two teams rank in the bottom three in scoring in the NFL, and they move at a very slow pace, slower than league average. That's the easy analysis. But teams, people, businesses, they're rising and falling from their stations in life all the time. So we got to ask ourselves, is either team going to play above their station tonight? I don't see it happening for Indianapolis, who's going to be without their best offensive weapon in Jonathan Taylor. They're going to be in a hostile environment on a short week, and they have had trouble protecting Matt Ryan all season long. Okay, on the other side, you have a Denver offense that's without Javante Williams. Do they really want to lean on Melvin Gordon, who's fumbled four times in four games this year? Low scoring game under 42 points. I agree with you. Go, uh, Indianapolis hasn't scored more than 20 points in a game in this season. All right, this entire season thus far. I haven't been impressed with them offensively at all. I don't know what the hell is going on with the Frank Reich, Matt Ryan combination. And now that Jonathan Taylor is going to be out, why the hell would I believe in anything in, in offensively for Indy? And in the case of Denver, we know how putrid their offense has been. Uh, apparently, Hackett and Wilson got a lot of work to do. Hopefully, they'll get it together. But I'm not enamored. I'm not impressed with what I'm seeing from them. I'm going to roll with you on this one. All right, unanimous decision. Let's go, making it easier for folks. Guys, it's a big AFC North matchup Sunday night when the Bengals visit the Ravens. Baltimore giving three. Joe, what's the play here? This has been one of my favorite games since I saw it hit the board in July. I circled this game much like I believe the Ravens have. In July, it was two and a half. Now it's three. I'll still lay it with Baltimore here. I like the fact that Baltimore lost last week to Buffalo because if they had beaten the Bills, this line's probably three and a half, maybe four. But because they lose, I think we get a discounted price. People forget the Ravens were humiliated by this Bengals team not once but twice last season. Grand total score 81 to 38 in two games. They blew them out both times. You don't think Harbaugh and his crew remember that? It's a Sunday night game. Big crab cake. You got a Cincinnati team that they haven't looked very good this year. They beat the Jets, and they beat Miami on a short week. They should have hammered Miami, given the situation. That offense looks out of sync. Zach Taylor's made some questionable decisions in terms of game management as a head coach of the Bengals. I like Baltimore to put it on him. John Harbaugh, 8-3 and three against the spread in his last 11 games, coming off a loss. I don't agree with you on this one. I'm not rolling with you on this one. You know why? Because I don't give a damn about anything you said when you take into account the Baltimore Ravens pass defense. It's trash right now. Ray Lewis and Ed Reed need to pay them a visit. <laughs> Put them brother through some drills. Teach them how to play against the pass because it's trash right now. No, I'm not going with you on this one. Mm. I need that sound effect for personal use. Uh, how about some college football Saban versus Jimbo this weekend? Alabama, Stephen A. They're a big favorite as the Aggies are getting 24 points. What do you like, Joe? I'm laying it. I'm laying it with Alabama. I'm not even going to think twice about this one. I'd play it all the way up to 27 and a half. You look at Texas A&M offensively, they are a mess this season. I wouldn't be surprised if they got blanked in this game. All right, they're 105th in the country in scoring. There's only 131 teams. And uh, Max Johnson, the starting quarterback, he's got a hand issue. I don't know if he's going to go this weekend, which means going back to Haynes King, who they just went away from a couple weeks ago because they couldn't get the offense going. And, of course, the Nick Saban, Jimbo Fisher angle. Nick Saban, since he got to Tuscaloosa, when he's playing with revenge, is lights out. What revenge means is essentially a team that beat you last year. How do you fare against them the following year? For Saban, 14 and one straight up, 11 and four against the spread, covering the spread by an average of six points per game. I think Bama puts it on him, especially from a defensive perspective. Lay the 24. Man, please, I'm with you, but for an entirely different definition of revenge. All that junk Jimbo Fisher talked about, Nick Saban, oh, this is personal. This is very personal. And the players will stand up and respond. I was wrong about Alabama romping Florida last year. That was a nail-biter. I was wrong about Alabama romping Texas this year. That was a nail-biter. I ain't going to be wrong this weekend. They are going to put it on Texas A&M and specifically Jimbo Fisher. Talking all of that talk. I like Jimbo, but boy, was that a mistake. You beat him last year. 
at Texas A&M, you got to go to Tuscaloosa and you talk that smack to Jim, to Nick Saban the way that you did. So disrespectful. I know that Nick Saban should have never mentioned his name, but boy, that was a mistake. There's a wrong. Mm. I'm going with the 24. Right. I'm go, I, there's a wrong. I'm just going to let Joe's record do the talking, and I'm feeling lucky today. Feeling good with that music. Joe, we will see you next week. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.